we've been practicing this song. As you know, I used to sing the song on tracks. Yeah. Finally, I got her to play it. <laughs> oh, my God, boy, I finally got her to do it. Yeah. Amen. So, thank you. And I see some familiar faces. Hello right. to y'all. <laughs> All right. All right, so Lisa.
so much you folks being here with us. Your f entire family is just a blessing. Amen. Thank you. And uh, y'all did a good job with that young lady. And uh, amen. I just wanted to make this announcement. I talked to uh, Charlize a couple of times already about it. She's probably getting tired of hearing it. But I, I really respect this young lady and what she's doing. She's joining the Air Force. She's leaving in September. Amen. And I'm so proud. I can't tell you. Thank you. Young person that's uh, you know got a plan yes. and uh, willing to serve her country and and kind of get her feel for what the future is going to hold for her. and I just pray God bless her and everything she sets her hand to. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Let's, this will be a time of growth and and the, drawing closer to the Lord and finding more of yourself and your yes. purpose in life and and what God has for you in the future. So the Lord bless you and all that you're doing. Praise God. Now we pray for the family that. Her being gone, they'll be able to kind of ease into the uh, next phase of their life as well. And I know they're so proud of her as well. Uh, I'm just really grateful for you folks being here and sharing your spirit, the spirit of the Lord with us. And it's just been a real blessing. Amen. Let's give them all another. Amen. 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 Praise God. So. Great time. I really feel in the presence of the Lord and all the worship this morning. And it's just, just a good thing for uh, brethren to dwell together. Amen. To come together and just experience all that God has for them. Thank you, Tim, for opening. And uh, all of you for sharing your prayer requests and your praise. And we just appreciate it so much. Praise God. So now it's time for the pain. <laughs> What's the opposite of sadness? Joy. The opposite of depression? Elation. The opposite of woe? Giddy up. So, in uh, keeping with the equine uh, kind of feeling here, I had a Shetland pony when I was young, and whenever he caught cold, he was a little horse. I really didn't have a Shetland pony. I always wanted one, but I never had one. I had a friend that had one. Oh, well, let's get going. Time flies like an arrow, right? And fruit flies like bananas. So. Yes, they do. All right, you've yes, suffered enough. It's time to get to the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. God bless all of you again. God's in a good mood. Amen. He likes to laugh. Praise the Lord and have a good time as well. So we're going to go to the Word of God now, and I'd like you, Peter, to let's begin Galatians chapter 6, and we'll read verses uh, 6 through 9. Thanks again for everybody being here this morning. So he said, Let him that is taught in the Word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. 
And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Praise the Lord. Kind of the theme of what was being said here this morning about a revelation. Amen. And that if we hang in there and trust God, there is a reward. Obviously, there is some, some challenges to that, or there wouldn't be the word up there that don't faint. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, let's look at Mark chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Mark 4, verse 13 and 14. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will you know all parables? The sower soweth the word. All right? Now let's look at Luke chapter 17, verses 5 and 6. The apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Yes. Stuff has to obey us when we're speaking the Word of God. Yes. Yes. I heard, uh, I was just listening to some of uh, Creflo Dollar this morning, and he said something that, I mean, we're probably all familiar with it, but still, uh, when... When Jesus asked his disciples, he said, who do, who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. And, of course, they said, named a bunch of stuff that other people had been saying. He was a prophet. He was Elijah and all these other things. And then he said to Peter, he said, but who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, and, that, and you're Peter. Peter means a fragment of a rock, a part of a rock, a piece of a rock. And he said, and upon this revelation, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. So what he's saying to Peter is, you're a piece of this church that's coming. And on this in completed rock, on this rock when we all come together, the gates of hell cannot prevail against us. Because of a revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. All that was being said here this morning about the revelation, about greater revelation and greater understanding. That's the purpose for every one of us. This was never meant to be about a bunch of different denomina denominations arguing over uh, doctrine. Amen. It was supposed to be about a revelation of Jesus right. in us. Right. And so that we could live together, so that we could be a blessing, so that we could... Uh, be an example to the world, to yes. people that are outside of Christ, that they would see that we had something that they wanted, that they needed. Right. Amen? So the more that we search the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ, the more we realize it's multi-layered. Sure. It isn't just what's on the surface. What's on the surface is great, but that's not all that there is. Right. We know that, just like this morning in worship, as we get into the Spirit, it just takes you deeper. I mean, you, just, you move beyond yourself. and you, you quit thinking about just as my brother said this morning, sometimes you got to shake some stuff off. Right. And the easiest way to do that is in worship. Yes. Things just seem to fall away and your mind gets focused on the Lord and you're not thinking about all the negative stuff. It's, it's a healing. It's a, it's a restoration that takes place. Amen? Amen? So the more we realize about this uh, multi-layeredness of, of, of Christ, but for people that are, that are satisfied with the, the surface truth, you know, the, the historical truth, the grammatical truth, the, the literal fulfillment of Scripture, I say, fine. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. Right. Those truths are facts. They're, they're real. They're, they're there in the Scripture. Amen? Amen? But the Scripture says if everything that Jesus did was written in the books, as the Scripture says, the books couldn't contain it. Exactly. So there's some stuff Jesus is doing and has done that we don't have a, necessarily a record of. Exactly. So our lives are being played out. You know, the church is doing things in us that isn't necessarily written in here. But the scripture says, if we'll open our mind to the teacher that's called the Holy Spirit, he can open us up to tremendous revelation. A revelation that flows from God's greatest treasure, which is the revelation of Jesus Christ, his person and his work. Everything else flows from that. When we make church about us and rules and regulations nobody's getting a real revelation of Jesus and that's what we need 
Because that revelation of Jesus opens up every other door. Look at John, if you will, Peter. John 6, verse 27 through 29. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. Right. The work of God is simply just believing. Exactly. Amen? Amen? We've made it about a lot of stuff. I mean, the church has, the religion has. But it's simply believing in God. It's yes. simply believing Christ, what He has said. Amen. See, we've entered, as you know, Paul talked about one man, you know, one man sows, one man waters, uh, another one reaps. Well, we've entered into another man's work. The work of Jesus Christ. He did it. He finished it. We just have entered into something that He has completed. And we get the benefit of it. He paid the price for it. And we get the results of it. Praise the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes. So, Timothy here, you know, Paul's writing to him and he says, it's, it's not just how much you study, it's what you study. So I need, based on this scripture, I need to study to show myself approved unto God. Not study to find out what's wrong with me, but God's approval of me. Yes. See, we're supposed to search the scriptures because they're a blessing. Yes. They're supposed to be good news. Yes. And a lot of times we search the scriptures and come away with bad news. Mm -hmm. I'm a no good, low down, this or that or the other thing, amen? And it says we're supposed to study, study the scriptures to show that we are approved of God. Right. Why are we approved of God? Because we've entered into another man's work. Yes. Jesus has approved us before God. Amen. Yes. Amen. God sees nothing but the blood. Right. He sees us through the blood of Jesus, and that means we're righteous and holy and perfect. And you say, yeah, but, but Nathan, I did this and I did that. Well, you don't even want to go there. I've got a list longer than yours, probably. But as far as God's concerned, I am righteous yes. because of my belief in Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. That'll change a person. Like Tim was talking about. That'll change a person's life. Yes. You don't change people by beating them up and talking about how bad they are and how no good and how low down. We've all been there. We've all done that. It's We're all, the, as I said earlier, we're all prodigals. And God's waiting with open arms for every one of us and for everybody else out here in the world that hasn't accepted Him. He's still looking for them to come home. He paid for them too. Yes, he did. Praise the Lord. So, the scripture isn't saying study the Greek and study the Hebrew. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But it means to be able to divide. Look at, he says, dividing the word of truth. He means divide the truth from the old covenant and the new covenant. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You understand what I'm saying? There's judgment. There's correction. There's or punishment Come on, man. throughout the old covenant. In the new covenant, there's acceptance. Yeah. There's love. There's grace. There's yeah. mercy. All the things that all of us really need but could never find under the Old Covenant. It sure. gave us all kinds of rules and regulations, but no way to keep them. Come no on, way man. to complete them. Amen? He, he, That's why Jesus came. Yes. He finished it. Yes. He kept the law Amen. perfectly and yes. then paid the price for our sin, Amen. for our failure to keep the law. Amen. So the Old Covenant disapproves you. Amen. And it disqualifies you. It the New Covenant shows you how you got approved and how you got accepted into the beloved. Amen. It was through the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. That's why we've got to have a revelation. That's why he should always be the focus. Yes. He did all the work. Yes. Amen. Philemon 6, Peter. You know, I, I, I was saved in a Pentecostal church. And, and we had a lot of work to do. Yeah. I, <laughs> I needed a lot of work. But, you know, we used to go out and we'd knock doors and we handed out tracts. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. We stood on street corners in East Texas on a main highway where Highway 10, Interstate 10 go through and stopping traffic and giving them, you know, handouts and 
you know, things like that. I mean, that was just the way it was done back in those days. And, uh, and we were proud, you know, I can't say we were proud, but we were not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. You know, that's what we did. But let me show you something. A lot of the things that we were, we were doing to attract people was to tell them how screwed up they were. Yeah. You know, you're going to hell. You're going to bust hell wide open if you don't get your stuff together quick and come to Jesus. You know, get your act together, get all cleaned up, and then come to the church, right? Well, this is what, this is what Philemon says, that the communication of your faith may become effectual. In other words, you, you're, the way you communicate your faith can be effective this way, by acknowledging every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Yes. Almost the opposite of what we thought. Right. Yeah. The way we communicate faith to other people is to show how God changes us yes. by the work of Jesus. Yes. And we only talk about the good thing yes. that's in us yes. because of Jesus. Yes. What Tim was saying earlier, you, you can dwell on your past. It's there. It's a, it's a, it's a reality. But it ain't going to change. Right. Your future is, what has to, is where all the potential is. You know. Right. So let's talk about how good we are. Yes. Sounds arrogant, but hey, this is what Jesus paid for. Yes. That's a, that make you feel good about yourself. Make you feel good about other people. You know what I mean? Praise the Lord. <coughs> Praise the Lord. So it's supposed to be about every good thing that's in us in Christ. Not by pointing out what may or may not be wrong with us. You know, it's easy to find fault. Because we're all filled with it. And we'd like to point yours out before you notice mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to focus on you instead of me, praise the Lord. But the gospel, look, let's look at this. The Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Verse 11 and 12. That I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Because I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And what did Paul preach? You are saved by grace. Yes. Right. Your old man is gone. You're a new creature now in Christ. Yes. You are now the righteousness of God in Christ. How? Because you believe. Exactly. Just simply because you believe. Exactly. Revelation. That's what this is. This is a revelation of the person and the works of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We talked about this here a while back. The sin that so easily besets us is unbelief. When you don't believe in the goodness of God and what God has done for you, that's sin. It's coming short. Unbelief is sin. It isn't all these individual things that we talk about, drinking too much, smoking, Whatever. The sin is unbelief. Yes. They, th those are consequences or behaviors that come from unbelief. Sure. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So that's the sin that so easily besets us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. So the point is, verse 2, look to Jesus. The focus has to be Jesus. In everything, we should be looking yes. for Jesus. Yes. Amen. He's in us. He's with us. So in every situation, we ought to be looking for his manifestation. Amen. Revelation. Amen. All right. Hebrews 11, verse 17 through 19. Hebrews 11, verse 17 through 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac 
shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So it says that Abraham was tested. Actually, it was Abraham's faith that was tried. Amen? Genesis, well, look at verse 17 again, if you can. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son. All right? Abraham's faith is being tried there. Because God told him, you're going to have a son, and through this heir, he's going to be the, uh, the blessing that brings an entire nation to God. He'll become. You will be, your offspring will be like the stars of the heaven and the sand of the sea. Come on. Amen. Abraham believed God. Because this was his only son at the time. His only chance at that truth of God to ever become a reality. But he still offers him because God told him to. He still believes, if necessary, God will raise him from the dead. Praise the Lord. Look at Genesis 22, verses 7 and 8. We're really just trying to simplify this whole religious thing. Yeah. It really just comes down to believing what God says. Yes. Amen. Amen. Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Praise the Lord. See, Abraham's problem, his trial, if you will, was about to meet God's provision. Mm -hmm. Because Abraham believed God. He said, God himself will provide sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Amen? In fact, you could say God will provide himself as a sacrifice. Amen? Look at verse 13 now, Peter. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Praise the Lord. A ram's caught in a thicket or a thorn bush, right? Look at John chapter 19, verses 1 through 6. And I'm telling you, what I'm saying is Abraham had a revelation of Jesus. He may not have had all the details and all the theology, but he knew that God was going to provide a sacrifice himself as a sacrifice. And Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him and the soldiers did what? Put a crown of thorns on his head. A lamb with his head in a thorn bush. Amen. His head and they put on him a purple robe. It said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring forth to you that you may know that I find no fault in him. He's sinless. Right? <clears throat> then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him. Crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Amen. The innocent lamb uh-huh. caught in the thicket yes. becomes the sacrifice. Yes. So that God's promise to Abraham will come to pass. Jesus paid the price for every promise in this book for you. But you've got to believe it. Praise the Lord. He's the fulfillment of everything in this Bible. This entire Bible is a revelation of Jesus. Most of it just isn't right on the surface. You have to look a little more. Praise the Lord. And then you got to believe. Uh-huh. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Now he's talking about Old Testament, Old Covenant, Israel. 
The gospel was preached to them. So when was the gospel preached to them? Well, let me tell you something. God taught Abraham yes. the new covenant. Yes, he did. Before the law even existed, God was teaching Abraham. God wants to teach you some things. He wants to show you how faith works. He wants to teach you personally. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. He sent it back to help us, to lead us, and to guide us into all truth. Amen. 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 So, Romans chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. How many of you heard that in church? Yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are to, all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Verse 19. None righteous. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Remember when we read Timothy and he said, rightly dividing the word between Old Covenant and New Covenant? Well, that's what's being addressed right here. He said, there is none righteous. Everybody is no good. Everybody's a failure. Everybody's gone away from God. Everybody's not looking for God. And that's the law. That's under the law. That's what he says. Nobody can keep the law. But here Paul goes on to say, now we know that whatsoever things are, the law says, it's saying to people that are under the law. Yeah. All right? So that every mouth will be stopped. In other words, so that nobody can take credit right. for being righteous. Because everybody's honest. If they're honest with themselves, they're going to say, I didn't make it here. I might have been pretty good over here in this area, but this one I blew it all together, right? So none can declare because if you're if you fail in one point of the law you failed in the entire law Amen. all right so look the law speaks to those who are under the law Abraham was not under the law there was no law for Abraham neither are we under the law because the law has been fulfilled in Jesus Christ so if you are a believer there is no more law amen you're not under it people that are under the law are the people that are not believers yet they're still accountable for their own Actions. <coughs> All right. So let me just get quickly. I'll, I'll just throw this in here. Hebrews 11, verse 20 through 22. I was going to talk more about this, but sometimes I end up confusing myself. So I'm sure I would have confused you as well. But. But look at this. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. What things was he talking about? He was talking about Jesus. He was talking about the Messiah. Even though this is thousands of years, there's no law yet. Right. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. So if you can go back again, Peter, to uh, 19... Or 20. There we go. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Jacob and Esau became two different peoples, two different nations. And yet God said, by faith, Isaac blessed them both. How? In concerning things to come. Concerning the future, concerning the coming of Christ, when we would become one new man. Yes. No more Jew, no more Gentile, no more black and white, no more right. male and female, no more this or that, but we're all yes. one man in Christ. Yes. Amen. That's what he's talking about here. Then he goes on by faith. Jacob, when he was dying, he blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped upon his staff. When he was dying. When Jesus was dying... He blessed everybody. Yes, he did. Not just the Jew, but everybody. Yes. In fact, the, the way you know this to be true, if you go back to Genesis, you'll find that when, when uh, Jacob was dying, as he, as he was dying, basically leaning on a staff like a cross, a type of a cross, he's, he's on the cross and he's going to bless. And 
and Joseph brings his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, up to him to have him bless him. The, the way it was supposed to work was the eldest got the right hand of blessing, mm -hmm. the major portion, and the younger would get the left hand. But Jacob goes like this. And Joseph corrects him. And he said, no, no, Father. He said, the, uh, the, other, the other one's the oldest. And he tried to move his hands. And Jacob said, no, I understand, son. I know what I'm doing. Wow. And in the future, you'll understand. Wow. Yes. The elder served the younger. How many of you know Israel was the first yes. born? But because they rejected Jesus, we were grafted in. The younger becomes first. Now, they're not done away with. They're still a blessing. But they come to it the same way, by faith. So he's showing Jacob thousands of years, hundreds of years, at least four or five hundred years before the law ever even showed up. He's given him something that's past the law. What it's all pointing to. Is Jesus this one new man? Yes. Yes. Amen. The last shall be first. The first shall be last. He even said that he, Jesus, even spoke to to some people in the Scripture, and he said, "You know, you're gonna. This is gonna shock you when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob go into the kingdom, and you're kept out." Now he's talking to the Jews who were under the law. And he's talking about people who had no law. They just had a revelation of Jesus. Without totally understanding it, but they were getting, God was giving them revelation of what his purpose and his plan really was. Praise the Lord. That's what I mean by the Holy Spirit wants to talk to us about stuff all the time. He wants us, he wants us constantly to be having a revelation of Jesus. Amen. Not religion, not, you know, what you didn't do right this week. or how, You know, I, I get up here and talk about all kinds of stuff because I've, I've probably done most of everything you've done that would be defined as sin in many churches. Well, I'm going to say that because some of you all worse than me. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just saying. That isn't what this is supposed to be about. It's supposed to be about Jesus. It's supposed to be about the, the awareness that we have of every good thing that's in us because of Christ. Yes. That'll change a person. Yes. That'll, that'll affect you in ways that just condemning and, and judgment won't change anything. It'll just irritate you. Mm -hmm. And we were talking before church and I said, I was in the Marine Corps, so I know a little bit about discipline. But I grew up in a house where my dad was a disciplinary. And I don't mean by today's standards. In fact, I'm talking about in the late 40s, early 50s, uh, child abuse was unheard of. Right. <laughs> there was no such thing. You know, whatever you had to do to get that kid to do what he was supposed to do is what you did. Right. And my dad, you, he, my dad did, had to do a lot of stuff. I mean, he used a belt on us. Right. We didn't think he was abusive. We just stayed clear of him. Right. You know, when we were acting up. You understand what I'm saying? Exactly. I'm not saying, you know, beat your kids. But I am saying sometimes you can spoil the child by sparing the rod. You know, sometimes there has to be some corporal punishment or physical uh, kind of consequences to get them to understand things. But the point is, God, he, he used people. He used people to, to correct people. And then when Jesus comes, he uses this, the Son of Man, mm -hmm. to bring people together. Amen. Right. To heal wounds and, 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 and get us past the, the religious rules and regulations that we never can keep and, and, and fulfill. Mm -hmm. Look at Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Excuse me. Peter, go to Romans. Uh, 3.20. Romans 3.20-28. 20 I'm sorry, I'm trying to... I, I want to move along here. Okay. Romans 
Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Mm -hmm. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Now the righteousness of God is now being revealed, right, without the law. Okay? Go on. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith, of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe because there's no difference right. because everybody sinned and come short of the glory of God Amen. being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It's excluded. By what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Okay? So according to this, there are some righteous. Even though we read before, none are righteous, no, not one, right? Mm -hmm. But here now, all of a sudden, we're seeing that there are some righteous. We are, yeah. right? We are the righteousness of God in yes. Christ, Amen. all right? Go on here, Peter, Romans 3, verses 29 through 31. Well, stay with me. I'm trying not to bore you, but... Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? This is the whole thing with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob blessing the, the sons and crossing them over and picking the younger over the, or over the older and so on and so forth. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith, the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. We establish the law. Now, under the old law, there's none righteous. Right. Romans 8, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Now, just leave that up there for a minute. First of all, under the law of the old covenant, you didn't need faith. You just needed right. discipline. Right. You needed to obey. You needed to do what it told you to do. Exactly. You couldn't do it, but that was the command. That was the demand on you. Okay? Right. So, the carnal mind is enmity against God. Why? Because it doesn't operate in faith. Exactly. You, can, you can't see... All of us know this. We established the law under the old covenant. Now, we... Under the old law, or I should say, under the old law, there is... No righteous people. Now we establish the law, amen, not of the old, but of the new covenant, the law of faith. Yes. Because under the old covenant, you couldn't have faith. Right. You just discipline. Sure. Yes. Now, it's, we just read a moment ago, it's by the faith of Jesus Christ. Now we receive Christ, we receive the faith of Jesus Christ. Right. right? Amen. So the, what he's talking about, the law that has been fulfilled or established is not talking about the law of the Old Covenant. He's talking about us establishing the law of faith in the New Covenant. Right. Okay? The law of faith is the law of God. And that's what he's talking about. So look at, uh, again, Romans 3, verse 27. Where is boasting then? It's excluded by what law? Of works? By the old covenant? No. But by the law of faith. Okay? Now, look again at Romans 8 and verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it's not subject to what? The law of God. Neither indeed can it be. The carnal mind could only be subject to the law of the old covenant. Right? Because it was just discipline. So it can't understand, it's, it, it, it's not subject to the law of God because it's operating in discipline and not in faith. Right? right? right. 
So here's, here's what he's telling me. Faith doesn't work in the carnal mind. And you know it and I know it. Because when you look at your circumstance or you look at the bill or you look at the hospital or the doctor's report or whatever it might be, you're looking at and your natural mind is saying, man, that ain't good. And I don't know what I'm going to do about fixing this thing. Right? So without faith, all you've got is fear, anxiety, stress. But by faith, you can look at that thing and say, but by his stripes I'm healed. Amen. Amen. Every set, everything I set my hand to will prosper. Praise the Lord. That's the law of faith that we live, that we establish. We're establishing the faith of God. We're establishing the law of God in the earth. Every time we believe God, we're establishing his law. Amen. We're not subject to this. We, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Praise the Lord. Faith is an operation of the Spirit. Romans 3, verse 31 again. So do we make void the law through faith? God forbid. That's how we establish God's law. It is by faith. Romans 4, 1 through 5. Praise the Lord. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he has whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted <coughs> excuse me, unto him for righteousness. It wasn't anything he did, it was something he believed. Right. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not... But believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. That's where we're at. All right. Verse 6 through 11 now. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. That's us. He will not impute sin to us. That's hard to get your head around. Amen. That's why it has to be by faith. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the Jews only, or upon the uncircumcision, or the Gentiles? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. I mean, blah. I know that gets crazy, but what he's saying is, Abraham was a Gentile before he became a Jew. Yes. The Jew just simply meant crossing over. Yes. So, obviously we understand circumcision was a law or a rite, a ritual of Judaism. Right. That's just a medical procedure today, but that's what it was at the time. And so it, it was a sign of your being a Jew or a believer in God. Right. Amen. But Abraham was declared righteous before he did any of that. Before he was circumcised, God declared him righteous because he believed. Then he was circumcised later, after he had already believed. Praise the Lord. So he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised. He already had it, in other words. Amen. That he might be the father of Everybody that believes. The uncircumcised or the Gentile and the Gentile and the and the Jew. Everybody, in other words. Praise the Lord. So that he be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Yeah. Praise God. Yes. Amen. The father of all. That's the crossing of the hands. That's the elder, you know, being the younger being chosen for the older. It's all a picture of what God's trying to show humanity all the way back. Praise the Lord. The father of all that believe. The Jews said, we have Abraham to our father. He said, no. If Abraham was your father, you'd believe in me. Abraham is the father of those in faith. Whether they be circumcised or uncircumcised. Whether they're Jew or Gentile. You've got to come the same way. It's by faith. And there'll be Jews saved. God hasn't given up on it. But right now, they're out. They've got to come to Jesus. They've got to have a come to Jesus moment themselves. They've got to come to, uh, to a realization that this thing is by faith and not by all the rituals and everything else you've tried to make. It. Right. 
In fact, God did away with all of that by the Romans destroying the temple and everything in it in 60 or 70 A.D. They haven't had a sacrifice since. All they've had is good works. That's all they could do. And sacrifice was the fundamental teaching of everything that they did because it all pointed to Jesus. Without that sacrifice, the sins were not pushed back. They were not rolled back for another year. Amen. Amen. I'm not against the Jews. Don't misunderstand me. I'm just saying they have been rejected because of their rejection of Christ. They haven't been cut off. They've just been put aside until they come to faith. Amen. 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 Faith is an operation of the Spirit. All right? Romans 3.31. We establish the law of God by faith. By believing what God says. Every time we believe, the law of God is established. Amen? Amen. Romans, uh, let's see. Let's go to uh, Romans 4, verses 12 and 13. Romans 4, 12 through 13. I'm, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here, but I do want, we've got to understand this. This thing is just about faith. It it's just believe in God. If you can believe God, every promise is yours. You can have it. You can experience it. Amen. The father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, who he had yet, who he had being yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. But through the righteousness of faith. In other words, God says you're going to be the, you're going to be a, you're blessed and you're going to be a blessing, and you're going to be the father of many nations. And He says, but that promise is not coming by their effort or by their works. That promise comes one way and on, one way only through the righteousness of faith. Exactly. Exactly. That's as plain as it gets. Christ was the seed, mm -hmm. and seeds plural is everybody that's in Christ. That's right. Amen. Verse 16. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Yeah. The only way it can, the promise can come to pass is if we believe, if we have faith. It, it's true of every promise in here. Yeah. That's just the prototype. That's just the, the, you know, like the beginning of this whole thing. So every promise of God works the same way. It operates the same way. There, is a, there it is, a faith. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end, so that, in other words, the promise can be realized to everybody, to all the believers, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all that believe, right? All right, verse uh, 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Now look who's talking here. This is God speaking. Yeah. And he's speaking to Abraham. Uh -huh. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. God is showing Abraham how it works. How faith works. He's teaching him faith. Yes. Abraham, remember, he's way back there. He would come out of idolatry where they had multitudes of idols and, and all that stuff, right? But he's saying, God's saying, I made you a father of many nations. I've spoken to you before my very self. Amen. Who? God. The one that quickens the dead or brings the dead back to life and calls those things which be not as though they were. Exactly. Exactly. So that Abraham could say, well, here's what my father does. He looks at his old age, his, his impotence, his inability to produce a child, and his wife being in the same boat. But instead of looking at that, he looks at the promise. He looks not at what is seen, but what is unseen. He looks at the promise, amen, and believes God, and it comes to pass. So God's showing him faith thousands of years before we ever come on the scene. He's showing how Jesus works Yes. Amen. In a person's life. Yes. Praise the Lord. It's a revelation of Jesus yes. Christ to Paul. I mean, to, to uh, Abraham. Yes. Praise the Lord. Awesome. 
Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 10 real quick here. We're about done. Praise the Lord. But stay with me. See, God's trying to dumb everything down. I don't mean that in a negative term. I, I just mean He's trying to simplify this so that we could understand it. Abraham had no theology. None whatsoever. If he had any theology, it was totally false because it came out of idolatry. All he knew was, I heard God and I'm going to believe Him. See, you don't need to have a degree in Greek and, and uh, you know Hebrew and everything else. You don't have to go to Bible college. you got a Bible. All you got to do is believe it. Yes. Believe it. And it will come to pass. You just have to believe it. Yes. You look at things that are not as though they are. Yes. Praise the Lord. When God said, by my stripes you're healed, I don't care what the doctor says. Either I'm going to believe God or I'm going to suffer the consequences of what the doctors are telling me. Hey, I've been here and done this. I, I was, I would, I look, a lot of you know this, but I'll just repeat it just for the sake. This is bring no glory to me because I was the idiot that got the thing. I had hepatitis C. I was going out to the VA and being treated, and there's no treatment for it. Yes. I, I was, you know, shooting up heroin and stuff when I was young, yes. stupid. No. I had drug habits and stuff. So I had a lot of stuff going on. Yes. So this is years later. Now I've, I've come to Jesus. My life has totally changed. Yes. But there's still consequences. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I'm out there for a routine thing. I don't even remember now what I was out there for, but I went out to the VA for some kind of a, you know. I don't know, physical for a job maybe or something. I can't even remember now. But nevertheless, they come back and tell me, hey, you got hepatitis C. I said, yeah, and? And they said, well, what that means is eventually your liver is going to shut down and you're going to die because there's no treatment for it. So all I did, I took the Bible. I went through the Bible. I found scriptures on healing. And I walked the bike path that wasn't far from our house. And I'd walk that thing every day, and I'd confess those healing scriptures. That's all I did. I didn't even tell my wife. Jesus. Not because I don't love my wife, but I wasn't sure she was going to be in the same place <laughs> in faith, you know? I figured she might say, oh, man, well, I don't know what we're going to do. Better, better get a good uh, insurance policy here and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Praise the Lord. So I just kept going. I kept going. Every, every two weeks, I had to go back for a blood test to see how it was progressing. Yes. And they did a liver scan. They did a whole bunch of other stuff. Everything was the same. It went on for a year almost. Yes. 10 months, 11 months, whatever it was. Went back the last time that I went back, and they, my doctor, the doctor I had been seeing, didn't want to see me. So he sent me to this female doctor, and I walked into her office, and she had all my, all the, you know, the liver scans and all the blood work and everything that had been going on for almost a year stacked up on her desk. And she said, Nathan, I got some news for you. And I said, what's that? And first I said, where's my doctor? And she said, well, he's not comfortable with, he's not comfortable with this entire situation. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know what I did to him, but <laughs> praise the Lord. But she said, I got some information for you here. And I said, and, and that is? And she said, I'm looking at the stack of records. And she said, if I didn't have these records sitting in front of me, I'd have to say, you never had hepatitis C because there's absolutely no trace of it in your system. I never had any treatment. I never had anything except confessing what God said. Now, I, had, I didn't deserve to be healed. I brought that thing on myself. You know what I'm saying? But God still honors His Word. Praise the Lord. God's not punishing people. I've said it before. As far as the sin issue is concerned between us and God, it's settled. Amen. The problem, the sin problem is this way. It's, yeah. it's horizontal. It's how we affect each other. Exactly. It's not between us and God. Between God and me, everything is good. Yes. Has been from the day that I believed. Yes. Doesn't mean I haven't still had some negative impact this way. Yes. But yes. there's consequences for that. Right? No. Amen. But not from God comes from the man, you know, from the law, from, from your spouse, from whatever, whoever it is you're messing with. Praise the Lord. All right? So, now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I'll show thee, and I'll make of thee a great nation, and I'll bless thee, and make it my name great, and uh, make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. It's God's telling Abram. He's given him this promise, right? And I'll bless him that bless you, and curse him that curse you, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham, we've already read, by faith is the only way that happens. Praise the Lord. 
So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. Now, if you remember, God said, don't take any family. Get out away from them all. Yeah. Right? Because they're all idolaters. Right. But he takes Lot with him. And, and Abram was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. Abram took Sarah's wife, Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, the souls that they had gotten in Haran, their, their servants and so forth. And they went forth into the land of Canaan. Into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land, and that's the place God was given him. And Abram passed through the land unto a place of Shechem, unto the plain of Morah, and the Canaanite was, in the, was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto thee, thy, to thy seed will I give this land. There builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence into a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and high on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. So Abram never believed God like Abraham did. I know they're the same God. But Abram didn't believe or he wouldn't have left when the famine was there because God said, go there and that's where I'm going to take care of you and this is all going to be yours one of these days and I'm going to bless everybody that blesses you and I'll curse anybody that messes with you. Right? So Abram never really believed God. He starts out by taking his lot and all these other people that he was supposed to leave behind. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Abram got a revelation. God said, your name is now Abraham. I'm going to put some God in you. Right? Abraham. You're not Abram anymore. You're Abraham. Abram. Abraham. Sarah. Same thing. No longer will your name be called Sarai. But Sarah. Yah. The A-H, the God. He put His name in them. Yes. Couldn't put the Spirit in Couldn't have Jesus in them yet. But He gave them the next best thing. Yes. And every time Abram would say His name, yes. He was saying, Father of many nations. Yeah. He was confessing what God had promised Him. Yes. And that's when you see things begin to change. Yes. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall I see be. So how can you believe in hope when there isn't any hope? You believe what God said. No matter what it looks like. Okay, a couple more scriptures here and we'll wrap up. Genesis 13, verses 14 and 15. Show you the type that God is using here. The Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, eastward, and westward, for all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. A physical land. Mm -hmm. And he's telling him, look east, look west, look north, look, look south. If you can see it, it's yours. It's yours. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. For us, yeah, the, the promises of God, See, that was Canaan. That was the promised land that eventually the Jews, God would tell them it was theirs. Why? Because it was Abraham's first. And it went on down, right? Jesus is the promised land. It's not a physical place. It's the rest that we enter into when we believe. Where God is the provider. Where He is our provision. Amen. Giving us houses we didn't build. Amen. Giant fruit. Amen. It's more than enough. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So that's what that's he Jesus is the reality of the yes. type yes. that Abram was looking at. But God was teaching him faith yes. in what was to come. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. So for us, the promise from God, if you can read it, if you can see it in your heart, if you can yes. believe it, yes. it's yours. Yes. God's yes. promise. Yes. If you believe. All things are possible. Yes. See, we see it by faith in the Word of God. We believe it. Mm -hmm. 
here's the deal. Faith in the devil is called fear or unbelief. And it's what it is, it's, it's casting out the Word of God in favor of an experience or a circumstance. It's believing in what you see more than what is unseen. Exactly. Which is the opposite of what God's taught us. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. We look at things that are not as though they are. Yes. And they become. Yes. Yes. Alright, John 15 verse 7. But we have to practice it. Sure we do. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, the Lord said unto Abram, alright, we're going to John 15 verse 7. If you abide in me, Jesus speaking, and my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it's done for you. Yeah. Seems too easy. Seems too simple. Uh-huh. But it's what the Word of God says. Yes. And it, it's everything God was teaching from Adam forward. Uh-huh. How it works. The plan's never changed. And it doesn't, it isn't altered by cultures. It isn't altered by, uh, you know, Years, what year it happens to be that you're living in, or doesn't it isn't altered by technology. None of those things have any effect on it whatsoever. No. No. Romans 4, 17 through 24. And it worked for anybody, anywhere, anytime that will believe. Amen. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God. Who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about 100 years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So he wasn't looking at things that were. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what the, he had promised, he was able also to perform. Yes. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Yes. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, yes. to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. Yes. We get the same thing. Yes. Me. Amen? Romans 5, verses 1 and 2. We are the seed of Abraham. The promise that came to Abraham is our promise. Yes. He said it's for you and your seed. Thank Though they be as the, you know, the stars in the heavens and the, and the sand of the sea. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith under this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Last scripture. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 8. James 1, 2 through 8. And we'll finish right here. Praise the Lord. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations or trials or tests of your faith. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. In other words, don't give up. If you hang in there and just continue to be patient, confessing what God says, you're going to be perfect and entire or complete, fulfilled, amen, with no lack. Want nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. This works by being single-minded. You have to stay focused. You can't, you know, it's just like, again, I'm not trying to draw attention to myself, but when I was walking that bike path for 10, 11 months, I kept having to hear what the doctors were saying all the time, every, at least every two weeks. But I just downloaded every bit of the Word of God that I could on healing 
to overwhelm that or to overcome that. So I would be single-minded. Even when they said the stuff they said, it just went in one ear and out the other or over my head. It was like being back in high school, praise the Lord. I didn't get nothing from it. It just came and went. Amen. Because I had, I had determined that this was going to be what I believed. And if you can do that, if you can be single-minded, you can have anything and everything that's in this Word. Because God has promised it to you. But you got to use faith. Praise the Lord. Faith is the law of God. It's how God operates. It's the law of the new covenant. Every time we exercise faith, there is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The law of faith is established every time we believe God. Every time we speak in agreement and act on the promise, there is a revelation of Jesus. A fulfillment of His promise. Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. He started it and He'll finish it. Just keep Him the focus. He'll give you all the faith you need. In fact, He said He's given to every man a measure of faith. And it's right there. Yes. Everybody has access to this. Yes. And all those promises are in there where faith resides. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise Amen. Amen. Let's thank the Lord. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. That's why we say go in the power of His might, yes. which is faith in what God has said. Yes. And it will come to pass. Yes. God cannot lie. Yes. Praise the Lord. He's a rewarder of them. That diligently seek. Hallelujah. He's here. He's in here. He's in here. And He wants to be revealed. Amen. And it happens every time we say, I trust You, Lord. I believe You, God. In spite of what things are said. Amen? Amen. It glorifies the Lord. And you get blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thanks again to... Uh, to Sue and, and her daughter and husband, thank you all for being here. Appreciate it so much. Y'all yes. were a blessing. And, uh, God bless you and have a great future. Yes. Believe in for it. Amen. God bless all of you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen.